The U.S. has threatened to levy additional tariffs on Chinese goods worth $300 billion. And unlike previous tariffs, which targeted industrial goods, the latest round is designed to hit a wide range of consumer products, ranging from electronics to footwear. A Goldman Sachs report stated the cost of U.S. tariffs have fallen entirely on U.S. businesses and households, with no clear reduction in the prices charged by Chinese exporters. So how seriously will these potential tariffs hurt American consumers and companies? And what can China do to protect its core and fundamental interests? Joining me for the discussion from Philadelphia is Brandon Blackburn Dwyer, founder of Grasshopper Strategies. And here in Beijing, Professor Jiang Gong of the University of International Business and Economics. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. We have talked rounds and rounds about these tariffs, but this latest round does stand out. Uh, and bear significance in that it will target everyday home products for American consumers and American households. We have heard earlier from a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson that um, the new round of tariffs is using American families as a hostage in the trade war negotiations, and they should not be a pawn in the trade war. Brandon, let me start with you. Is that just typical spokesperson talk? Or is it actually going to happen? I, I think that the idea that the American consumer is going to be much more affected by the next round is correct. Are, are they hostages in all of this? That's obviously sort of the hyperbole that we now attribute to pretty much any international spokesperson, regardless of their heritage or their nationality or their citizenship. Now, President Trump has pretty clearly stated that the 10% tariffs on the remaining $300 billion worth of trade, which basically means that there will now be a tariff on every good purchased out of China, will happen by September 1st. This is President Trump, though. Do we really know that's going to happen? No. Is it more than likely that it will? Absolutely. President Trump has gone through with every single one of his major threats to put tariffs, and it's not likely that China is going to be interested in giving him anything in the next 20, 22 days that will actually change his mind on that. What that means is the next month, American companies will be buying everything they possibly can to try to store up as much of their supplies out of China. And we're, so we're going to see short-term trade actually go up. But once we hit September 1st, it's going to really hurt. And it's going to hurt as American consumers are looking at rising prices in Q4, which is the holiday season. John, earlier rounds of tariffs hit American farmers and businesses, probably not so much um, American uh, average consumers and households. But that is going to change with this round of tariffs. Do you think it's a change in tactics? And we have about a month before September 1st. Does that leave room for maneuver between the two sides? Well, um, it, I'm not sure if it's a you know, right tactic. I mean, if you look at this report just recently, I think it's just today or yesterday from Wall Street Journal, this represents the most bizarre story I've ever seen. You know, reportedly, he, the decision came out of a uh, discussion with his uh, people, uh, Lighthizer and, um, and, and, and Nguyen, and, you know, he is preparing for telling the public something for a next day rally in Cincinnati. And he's expected to say things like, you know, we have this big purchases from Chinese side, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't get that. And instead, he has to tell something to the, repub to the public and they're ready. And, and, and he decided to pose, impose this tariff so that he can make some news for this big rally. I mean, if this is tactic, you call this tactic, I just find it very, you know, really baffled to me. You know, something as important as Sino-U.S. relationship can boil down to a, having something to say for a rally in Cincinnati. This is just bizarre in international relations to me. Well, if that's true, it certainly is bizarre and very <laughs> reckless when it comes to um, this relationship. Brandon, do you have an estimate um, on how much more American consumers or American families could end up paying as a result of the new tariffs? It's hard to put a number on it. I'll quote a couple of different studies. A number of studies have said that the current existing, not the new 10%, but the current existing tariffs have raised annual consumer expenditures in the United States by about $700. That's what the annual impact can be. Some studies are saying that the new 10% will increase that to about 900 and 950. That means that in theory, the new 10% tariffs can cost American taxpayers about $250 across a year. Now, 
I think actually the impact is going to be much larger. Why it's going to be larger is because we have seen a lot of companies doing everything possible to moderate the impact of the cost on their supply chain and not pass along to the consumers. And what we've seen over the last three weeks is many of these companies have come out with their end of Q2 earnings statement saying, look, we're done with that. We're going to start passing this on full bore to our consumers. We have a oil pipeline company already saying we are going to assess new fees to the people that get oil from us, specifically referencing the Trump tariffs. We are going to see companies like Polaris, who is working very hand in hand with the government, 9,000 jobs in the United States, saying we're going to have to move to Monterey, Mexico by the end of the year if these tariffs aren't gone. We're going to see higher prices, which is going to cut back retail, which is going to hurt retail uh, jobs, which is going to hurt the Christmas season, which is the major buying season in the United States, and we're going to see consumers actually having to spend more. This is a triple or quadruple whammy waiting to hit as a mini tsunami for the U.S. economy. I, I have a very simple calculation for this. You're talking about 10% on top of $300 billion of imports from China. And that's $30 billion. And the $30 billion most likely is not going to be digested by these companies because these are consumer products and products. And, you know, the retail industry in the U.S. is raising a thin margin here. So I'm very likely these things will be just passed directly on to consumers. So $30 billion on a market of, say, 100 million households in the United States. That's $300 per household. So, you know, this is a lot of money on top of the $700 uh, Brandon just talked about. So, on average, you're talking about over $1,000 for each American family for year 2019 and possibly into 2020. On average, 40% of American households have difficulty just to cough up $400 on an accidental basis. I mean, this is based on previous study. So, I'm, I think this is a very, very big blow to American family. And let alone we're getting into the fourth quarter, which is going to be the holiday season. It's going to be a very difficult holiday season for American households, and uh, God bless them, they will, they will pass through that. <coughs> and chances are they will feel the pinch um, going near the holiday season with their holiday shopping plans. Brandon, what is Mr. Trump telling American people about who will be footing the bills from the tariffs, and why is he saying that? Uh, well, one, he's been continuously claiming that any tariff on China is a tax paid by China because he either fundamentally misunderstands how tariffs actually work or he's just happy spreading, spreading falsehoods. I'm going to go with these happy spreading falsehoods. And the reason I say that is his top, one of his top economic uh, advisors, Navarro, went on Fox News and said that Americans are not paying for these tariffs. And Fox News hosts, one of the most pro-Trump news entities on the planet, called him out on it. And so Navarro is, again, either an idiot who can't read the news because every company is saying, we're passing these taxes along to our consumers, or he's just lying. And I think he's just lying. I mean, at the end of the day, the Trump administration lives either in fantasy land or idiot land. You can make a choice, but the outcome is the same. The Trump administration claims these tariffs have zero impact on U.S. consumers when in reality we see every single indication from company corporate earnings to news to economic analysis to frankly just simple reality of walking into stores that these tariffs are increasing prices. Has it been massive yet? No, but we will see more visible increase in prices with these new round of tariffs because as my colleague has pointed out, the bulk of this remaining $300 billion is strictly consumer goods, things like phones, computers, toys for children. Those have been largely left out of the tariff so much. A lot of it's been on steel, things that are sort of like in the supply chain, so it's harder to tell exactly where the price increase comes from. But all of a sudden, if your kid toy now costs 10% more when you go to uh, Walmart to pick it up for their birthday or for their Christmas, their Hanukkah gift, you're going to notice, right. and Americans are going to start to notice. Larry Kudrow, this is on the record. Larry Kudrow, his economic advisor, openly said on Fox News that American people are paying for these tariffs. So this is on the record. All right. Uh, gentlemen, let's also talk about countermeasures from China, because you can count on it that there will be some sort of countermeasures um, from Beijing. Some American analysts say that some of, the, some of these options, including heading back with tariffs, which China has been doing with previous rounds of tariffs, Restricting rare earth supplies, devaluing the yuan, and making life harder for U.S. companies. John, any of the options seem likely? Um, well, we've already seen that the uh, yen has depreciated up to uh, you know 127 right now, above 17 right now. Is that a deliberate step the by I, Beijing? Well, I mean, there's a statement from the uh, central bank here in China that uh, uh, it's a reflection of the uh, unilateralism on the U.S. side. So it appears to me that it is just pointedly targeting at the U.S. Uh, as a response in the short run. 
Uh, other than that, I think there are still a few billion dollars, dozens of billion dollars of uh, imports from the U.S. that can still be subject to tariff. Um, and also, and you mentioned uh, rare earth, and I think China is also uh, preparing for an entity list uh, that is similar to the entity list at the uh, Department of Commerce. So all these measures are possibly on the table. Uh, but my hope is that we don't have to go down that path. I mean, it's a, it's a path uh, that escalates tensions. Uh, you know, overall, I think uh, China and U.S. still need a deal here. Uh, let's keep in mind, so far, it's still a treat, uh, and uh, we'll see whether uh, he will actually implement these tariffs on September 1st. I'm pretty sure China is not going to uh, do anything prior to September 1st, right. but if these, tariff, if these tariffs are indeed imposed, China will respond. Well, China doesn't have to go down that road, but it's been put in a very difficult situation to respond. Brandon, uh, America has to be ready and bracing for some of these options. What is Washington's thinking in dealing with possible countermeasures from Beijing? One, I, I'm not really confident that the Trump administration really is prepared in any way, shape, or form other than to rant about it. You've already seen President Trump this morning take to Twitter and complain about uh, the move by the Chinese central bank to devalue the yuan. This has been a common complaint from the Trump administration saying that it's part of the uneven trade, but it's the reality. It's one of China's major tools in its tool chest, and it's already showing its willingness to use it. I do expect, like my colleague, to see asymmetric responses. I don't necessarily think that China will respond with countervailing tariffs that will match the United States like they have in the past. What they'll start doing is they'll move to the yuan devaluation, they will move to rare earth concerns, and maybe just even slow walking stuff. That was a move China used against Japan five or six years ago. They don't have to shut down rare earth, they can just slow it down, and that will hurt the U.S. economy. Economy. They can move to other sort of uh, the end of these listings like that. They don't have to create tariffs to hurt the United States economy at this point because the U.S. has pushed us to such a brink that any of these small structural changes will hurt the United States and the global economy. Gentlemen, great talks today. Brandon Blackburn Dwyer, founder of Grasshopper Strategies, and Professor Jiang Gong at the University of International Business and Economics. Thank you so much for joining me on the link today. And that is all we have on this edition of The Point on CGTN. As always, feel free to follow us on Facebook and Twitter using the handle The Point with LX. Download the CGTN app to watch our show on your mobile devices or go to YouTube and look for CGTN The Point. I'm Zhong Shi in Beijing. Thank you so much for your company.